welcome to our show of Expat Corner of VTV4. First, in the first part of the show, let's join us in a trip to Kufu National Park. Here we'll see an expat from Germany traveling a long way from his homeland to Vietnam. This man has been spending much of his time and a lot of efforts for the conservation of primates. Why does he decide to do so? Why does Vietnam that he chose to stay for so long? Well, this man has all the answers to those questions. Here, on the edge of the forest, the endangered primate rescue center is the destination we are heading for. Run by Tilo Nettler, a German, the center is home to hundreds of threatened primates. Having these unique animals survive the brink of extinction was the goal of Tilo from his first trip to Vietnam. My first uh, visit in Vietnam, it's already long ago, 80, 82 was the first visit. And um, then the second, the second one is 91. Uh, it was actually an expedition for Frankfurt Zoological Society. This based on the uh, um, discovery, rediscovery of a very rare primate species. So this was the background. And um, based on this, the project was born. So we started uh, our project work in 92, 93. And since 93, I'm based now in Kukfor. Acknowledging the uniqueness of Vietnam's primates, Tilo has devoted decades of his life to the conservation of these wild animals. Vietnam in general is a very, uh, has a very high biodiversity. A lot of uh, animals occurs only in Vietnam, nowhere else in the world. And on the top of this actually also primates. We have, we have uh, several species occur only in Vietnam, nowhere else in very small populations, it means only some animals left and uh, they are under big trouble and in, uh, under big threat and this was the reason that we focused on primates. With decades of isolation after the war, no research was carried out on Vietnam's primates. Also, as these species are typical only to Vietnam, Tilo had to develop his own knowledge about the primates from almost nothing. There are no scientific work from, from foreign scientists and also uh, not enough uh, Vietnamese scientists to work on this field. It was actually for many primate species nearly nothing what we, what we knew. And uh, during our work, of course, we, I think we contributed a lot to the knowledge of, of primates. And uh, luckily now, actually, about the rarest primates, uh, we have the best knowledge. Bit by bit, the research made progress. So you see, this amount of leaf is actually only one third. We feed uh, three times a day. Uh -huh. And uh, this leaf comes from the uh, surroundings of a national park. Is this far from here? And Sometimes it's quite far, yeah? so people they have to go by motorbike, ah. sometimes up to 10 kilometers in, in, a, in an area uh -huh. to, to, to cut the leaf. We feed now more than 300 kilos every day and you see the leaf is necessary to, to make such bundles. Ah, okay. so, so, so the primates, uh, they, they eat only one kind of leaves. This is actually the biggest problem. They don't eat everything what is green. Ah. They have very special uh, plants and very, they have very special requests on the food, Which and is that? Uh, and you see, you see also that they don't eat, they don't eat everything. They they, they don't this they don't eat. So the old leaf, they eat only this one. You know. After successfully raising the primates at the center, Tilo makes another step by nurturing baby primates. Many of the young and newborns are now taken care of here. So here we have one young gibbon. This is a baby, it is born here. Mm -hmm. You see gibbon. Gibbon has no tail. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, mother, the mother refused to, to take care of this baby. So we, we took it away and we have it now 
in hand weighing. And uh, of course, uh, such a baby from a, from a first day, uh, it makes a lot of work. We have to, to provide heating system, we have to feed day and night, mm -hmm. we have to feed every one and a half hour in the beginning, it means also at night. And uh, if you feed one and a half hour, every one and a half hour, it means you have also to prepare the food. You have only one hour to sleep, then you go again oh, <laughs> to feed. It's like the, uh, <laughs> caring for it's, a, a human uh, baby. Actually, or? actually, it's more work. Ah. It's more work than to care for a human baby. Patient <laughs> from an adult one, it means it will not change anymore. Ah. But this one, the Delacroix Lengos, you see he starts now to change. The tail will also change. The adult one has a very big, big long tail, oh. very big tail. Uh, big black tail. With his great love for primates, Tilo spent most of his time with the animals. He is now among those with the largest knowledge about these endangered species in Vietnam. Primate protection is already part of his life. Going through many challenges, Tilo finally set up a facility to ensure the safety of the local primates. Here, they have a place to live without fear of poaching. They are also well fed and treated in case of diseases. Now we have 150 here. Many of the primates are arrived here at our center in a very, very bad condition. And we have sometimes, you know, we have to amputate a leg or an arm because it is has a very, it's damaged uh, from, from traps or from, from bullets from a hunter. So these are actually very sad stories. And uh, on the other hand, if such a primate survives and if, if we can involve such animals in a breeding group and then we see uh, they have a new family and they have new babies, this is really a very nice result. However, Tilo is not alone in his career of bringing safety to the endangered animals. Since the start of the project, he found him, someone who shares the same interest in wildlife. Coming to the project since the first day it opened as an economic student, he just wanted to find a part-time job here. But after a while, her love for the wildlife grew. She's been working with Tilo and other foreign and Vietnamese experts since then, making the center one of the largest facilities for wildlife conservation in Vietnam today. Through the years, he has helped Tilo a lot with all the center's works. Their common interests in wildlife also have nurtured the love between them. When I first came here, I worked mainly as a tourist guide and interpreter. In October 1997, I officially worked as an assistant to the project in the center. As the project was started by a German, an assistant must be someone who is able to handle different tasks. In the first five years, I devoted much of my time to take care of the wild animals or drive patrols across the forest with the local forest rangers. However, I now work more in the office and do scientific research. Come sun or in the rain, he and accompanies Tilo, who is now her husband, in the daily work at the center. She's even more inspired by her husband. Not only me, but many of the staff working in the center are inspired by Tilo's love for wildlife. Primates are close to human, so we all love them. The job here brings me great happiness for my life. The center has proved a success, but there are still impressions that he cannot forget, and that's the motivation for her to try more. I still remember that one time, just a day before the Lunar New Year celebration, I got a phone call from Katba about seven langurs that had been rescued from chaps. Three of them were already dead. 
Only one mother Lenga with a baby and two other adult Lengas were alive. We immediately traveled to Katba Island in a rented boat. In those last days of the year, there was no one there and no services were available. Then we were able to retrieve the injured Lengas and brought them back here. We came back to Kukfeng just 10 minutes before the new year. However, that's a sad memory and I cannot forget. The mother Lenga died after just two weeks. The baby died soon after that. One adult Lenga died and only one survived. Dozens of staff have worked in the conservation center by far. At first, many of them came just to find a job and earn a living. But when they meet with Tilo and work with the animals, their love for the wildlife grows. Tilo is very friendly with all the staff working here. We all understand his passion and support him as much as we can. Some staff has overcome their fear to work for the safety of the animals. In the first days, I was shaking when the langurs clung onto my body, but after two days, I saw that they were so cute. I love them. Well, I have been working here for nine years. Tilo is a foreigner, and at first, I did not talk to him very much. But gradually, I came to know that he's kind to all of the staff in the center and also the primates. After work, Tillo and Hien returned to their home, which is located just a few hundred meters from the office. Here, the couple lives with Hien's mother and their two sons, Hien and Hui. It's been a long way for the two people with different counter backgrounds to come together and enjoy a nice ending like this. As Tillo said, he has been closely connected to Vietnam and his ties with the land and the people grow stronger as days go by. Now, after nearly 20 years, of course, there is no way back. And, <laughs> and uh, uh, we are so uh, closely, I am so closely re related with, with Vietnam now. It means uh, from a private side, also uh, from, a, from a work that uh, actually it's no possibility to do something else or to move to somewhere else. Hien came here initially to do wildlife protection, but her affection for Tilo grew and they finally got married after overcoming challenges of age, culture and social prejudice in the past. We faced many problems when we come to each other. Tilo is older than me. Actually, he is 31 years older than me. My family at first did not agree. We had to struggle for around nine years. My mother worried that if I got married to a foreigner, I would leave Vietnam. I was also isolated from my relatives and friends. However, the bond between us grew stronger and stronger thanks to our work and love. I love and admire him so much. There were times that he drove me to Jean Kho on the way to Hanoi. We stopped at a petrol station, held each other and cried for an hour. And then we decided to come back here. I still remembered he said that if I left him, he would give up his job in Vietnam. So thinking about the job, I made up my mind and decided to stay with him. For the couple, the meeting in Vietnam seemed destiny. It is a destiny to stay now in Vietnam and to work to work for conservation and of course also to take care of our family. I think I am a happy woman. I love to be his assistant in the work, which carries great meaning, and also I love to share my life with him.